Welcome to Blessed Sacrament Cathedral. This is Monday of the fifth week of Lent. Yesterday, the fourth Sunday of Lent is often called Passion Sunday, which leads up to this coming Sunday, which is Palm Sunday. So we are moving more intensely into the Lenten experience and ever closer to Holy Week. Let us take a minute and place ourselves now in the presence of God. <clears throat> If you're following along, our opening song today is in Gather, number 698. We're going to do two verses of Take Up Your Cross. <laughs> Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit brothers and sisters let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries you were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy, Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy, Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy, Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. <clears throat> o God, by whose wondrous grace we are enriched with every blessing, grant us so to pass from former ways to newness of life, that we may be made ready for the glory of the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. The assembly condemned Susanna to death, but Susanna cried aloud, O eternal God, you know what is hidden and are aware of all things before they come to be. You know that they have testified falsely against me. Here I am about to die, though I have done none of these things which these wicked men have charged me. The Lord heard her prayer, and as she was being led to execution, God stirred up the Holy Spirit of a young boy named Daniel, and he cried aloud, I will have no part in the death of this woman. All the people turned and asked him, What is it you are saying? He stood in their midst and continued, 
Are you such fools, O children of Israel, to condemn a woman of Israel without examination and without clear evidence? Return to court, for they have testified falsely against her. Then all the people returned in haste. To Daniel the elder said, Come sit with us and inform us, since God has given you the prestige of old age. But he replied, Separate these two far from each other, that I may examine them. <clears throat> After they were separated one from the other, he called one of them and said, How have you grown evil with age? Now have your past sins come to term, passing unjust sentences, condemning the innocent, and freeing the guilty. Although the Lord says the innocent and the just you shall not put to death. Now then, if you were a witness, tell me under what tree you saw them together. Under a mastic tree, he answered. Daniel replied, Your fine lie has cost you your head, for the angel of God shall receive the sentence from him and split you in two. Putting him to one side, he ordered the other one to be brought. Daniel said to him, Offspring of Cana, not of Judah, Beauty has seduced you, lust has subverted your conscience. This is how you acted with the daughters of Israel, and in their fear they yielded to you. But a daughter of Judah did not tolerate your wickedness. Now then, tell me under what tree you surprised them together. Under an oak, he said. Daniel replied, Your fine lie has cost you also your head. For the angel of God waits with a sword to cut you in two, so as to make an end of you both. The whole assembly cried aloud, Blessing God who saves those who hope in him. They rose up against the two elders, for by their own words Daniel had convicted them of perjury. According to the law of Moses, they inflicted on them the penalty they had plotted to impose on their neighbor. They put them to death. Thus was innocent blood spared that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to According to John. Glory, Glory to, to you, O Lord. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. <clears throat> but early in the morning he arrived again in the temple area, and all the people started coming to him, and he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and made her stand in the middle. They said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. So what do you say? They said this to test him so that they could have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and began to write on the ground with his finger. But when they continued asking him, he straightened up and said to them, let the one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again he bent down and wrote on the ground. And in response they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. So he was left alone with the woman before him. Then Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She replied, No one, sir. Then Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, do not sin any more. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. So in the first reading today from the book of the prophet Daniel, we come upon the scene of a trial. It seems like everybody has got on board and decided that this person, Susanna, is guilty and deserves <coughs> her penalty. We can look at this as outsiders and say, wow, talk about a rush to judgment. Luckily, the Lord sent Daniel. And we hear that Daniel is a young boy. Normally, he would not have even been listened to by the elders. But God, as we said the other day, doesn't have to write inside the lines. And so they call him up. And in a rare statement from the elder to the younger, come sit and inform us since God has given you the prestige of old age. Now we can see this sort of like we're watching a TV show. And have real clarity. The problem is, 
as Daniel says to that group of people at the time. Now have your past sins come to term, passing unjust sentences, condemning the innocent, and freeing the guilty. We can't stay out of the picture. We can't simply see this as if we're watching a TV show. As we break scripture open today, we are being asked to examine our own realities about judging other people. It's easy to get caught up in the moment. It's easy to get caught up in the crowd and to be very forceful in our conviction that something is right or something is wrong. But Jesus always calls us to a more reflective reaction to the reality in front of us. And we see that in today's Gospel from John. Jesus had been on the Mount of Olives, presumably in prayer. He comes down and starts teaching the people, and of course the scribes and the Pharisees, who have now been plotting more earnestly to find a way to get rid of him, set him up. They bring a person to the him that they are proof positive has been tried and convicted in their own minds and in their hearts a preponderance of evidence and so it's a lock so if he says yes stone the person then they will say well where is your loving God that you speak of so often, your Abba, Father. If he says, let her go, then they're going to say, well, that's not what Jewish law teaches. Either way, they figured they have him. But Jesus never answers their question. He bends down and begins to write on the ground with his finger. There is nothing that actually tells us what he wrote. There are no pictures or video. But the conjecture is that he started to write sin. Hatred, and I'm just conjecturing as well. Lying, cheating, gossip, rash judgment. And I'm sure as he wrote, the sins got more pronounced. What happened? The people who were standing there with stones in their hands were watching what he was writing. One by one, it clicked. That's mine. There's another one. And so he stood up and said, let the one among you who was without sin be the first to throw a stone. Now think about that. He turned it around on them. Because if they throw a stone, they're basically declaring to the world that they are sinless. Now let's fast forward to today. Imagine us standing in the crowd and we're getting ready to throw a stone. Maybe our spouse is next to us looks at us in the eye and says, really? You're going to throw a stone? 
maybe our best friend or our parent or our child. Really? You're going to throw a stone? Put it down. You don't get to do that. Did you hear the criteria? Let the one among you who's without sin be the first one. You don't get to throw a stone today. And in response, they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. And then we get to the real heart of the reality. Jesus straightened up and said, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, sir. And he said, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, do not sin anymore. He didn't say, It's okay. He doesn't give us a pass on everything we've done. He says, you always have access to mercy. You always have access to forgiveness. I am not condemning you. I am loving you into a new way of being. Go and sin no more. As we continue today, maybe it's a good day to reflect on our own rush to judgment in so many ways of people in our lives. Maybe it's a good day to have that imaginary stone in our hands and ask whether we really could be the one to throw it or not. And if we can't, and I'm presuming that's true for most of us, drop the stone. Ask God forgiveness for your judgment on another. And just as importantly, thank God for his mercy that he forgives us. Because he says to each of us today, has no one condemned you? then neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, do not sin anymore. Gathered as one, we now lift our prayers to God. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Bishop Edward, and all clergy and lay leaders, that may God's hope shine abundantly through them as they lead the church in the world today, and particularly in this time of distress. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all those who are elected to government positions, may God's justice be in their hearts and compassion as they make decisions for the best interests of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For all of those who are sick, that God may touch them with his healing power and in particular for those who care for them, that they may be kept safe by the power of God. And we all come through this with God's healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all of us in our faith community, may the Lord help us to always grow in faith, hope, and particularly love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And for the faithful departed, May God's peace be with them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. And for those intentions which you hold within the silence of your hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, we humbly place our prayers before you and ask that you hear and answer them. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that preparing to celebrate the holy mysteries, we may bring forth before you the fruits as the fruit of bodily penance of joyful purity of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up to, to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right and just. just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty, since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted to you at last, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. <clears throat> Celebrating, therefore, 
therefore the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son who left us this pledge of his love. We offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also, together with your Son, and in this saving banquet graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. May he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope and Edward our Bishop and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our sisters and brothers and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. teaching we dare to say our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other across the way a sign of peace. away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
strengthened by the blessing of your sacraments, we pray, O Lord, that through them we may constantly be cleansed of our faults, and by following Christ, hasten our steps upward toward you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Set free from their sins, O Lord, we pray the people who call upon you, that living a holy way of life, they may be kept safe from every trial, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This Mass is ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our closing hymn is again number 698, verse 5. like my head is cut off so I'm going to get down a little lower here we're happy that you're with us all these days and I do want to remind you for those who are just tuning in to text the word faith to the number 724-305-3057 to get the latest updates from the Diocese of Greensburg about what we're doing and I want to remind you again, we mentioned this to you the other day, that the diocese will be conducting a virtual Holy Week through our uh, uh, network of social media. And so you will be able to connect with us for Palm Sunday, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, Holy Saturday, and of course Easter Sunday. So text FAITH to this number to get connected to the diocese to find out how to connect with us for these services. I also want to remind you that you can connect to Blessed Sacrament Cathedral at our website, blessedsacramentcathedral.org. Finally, again, it's tough times for everybody, I realize that, and at the diocese of greensburg.org, you can find a way to give, particularly to your parish, our parish has online giving. A lot of parishes do, but if your parish doesn't, please connect with giving to your parish offertory to keep the lights on and our services to you coming. God bless you all. Be safe, and we'll see you tomorrow at 1030. Bye-bye.